Andrea, the guest speaker is uh, Alexandra Nico, and she's talking about the flash, this flash mass is going to Thank you very much. Dear audience, first of all, I would like to thank for the opportunity to present my data about the follow-up study of acute pancreatitis, which is called the Gulash Plus trial. We wrote um, of uh, progression from acute pancreatitis to chronic pancreatitis syndrome, and uh, several pathomechanisms were uh, described which take part um, in this uh, progression. It is known that in patients who had only one uh, acute pancreatitis attack, the development of chronic pancreatitis is 10%, while in patients who had more recurrent acute pancreatitis attack, they develop in 36% chronic pancreatitis. Can you please talk into the microphone? Oh, yes, sorry. Okay. Um, Hegyi Péter Jenő will present uh, after me that uh, after the third uh, recurrent acute pancreatitis attack, the early chronic pancreatitis can be considered also without morphological changes. So we can conclude that the recurrent acute pancreatitis is uh, a very important mechanism in the progression to chronic pancreatitis. Um, it is an interesting question that uh, how the endocrine and the exocrine insufficiency will develop after an acute pancreatitis. Um, in this meta-analysis, um, we can see uh, based on 31 study that the development of uh, newly diagnosed diabetes after pancreatitis was 23%. And uh, the full incidence, if they made a subgroup analysis, it was higher if the patient had a severe pancreatitis. It was higher when the patient had uh, necrosis. Um, they could uh, see um, more time diabetes in patients who had an alcoholic pancreatitis. And uh, during the follow-up, the full incidence within five years was 20%, and over five years, it was already 31%. The meta-regression showed no associations between the incidence of diabetes and the proportion of male patients, duration of uh, follow-up, or the mean age. The aim of the Gulash Plus trial is to find the biomarkers of the early phase of uh, chronic pancreatitis. And of course, we would like to see how will be the development of the endocrine and exocrine insufficiency, development of pancreatic cancer, in these patients and uh, how will be the mortality during the follow-up. The Gulash Plus trial is a six-year follow-up trial of patients who had an acute pancreatitis attack and uh, who take part in the Gulash uh, study. We plan to involve 557 patients, and this is a multicentric study, uh, which is an international British space run and then ethical approval. Um, shortly, I would like to show you the protocol of this study. Um, every year, the patients will have an imaging, which is BNRI endoscopic ultrasonography or MRCP. Every year, there is a physical examination and a detailed uh, laboratory examination um, of this patient. Um, every year, we measure the endocrine parameters, we measure the fasting blood glucose, hemoglobin A1C, C peptide and in those patients who had no diabetes yet, an oral glucose tolerance test will be performed together with the uh, insulin levels. And uh, every year, exocrine insufficiency will be tested with uh, the help of the prokaryotic test. We plan later to make a uh, genetic testing in this patient. And um, um, we have several questionnaires about uh, dietary, um, habits, physical activity, quality of life, and the uh, stress of these patients. And uh, while this Gulash Plus trial is really uh, valuable, 
because uh, we have from all of the years here on plasma and the uh, faces levels in uh, our biobank from these patients. Um, now I would like to show you the results, the preliminary results of the first two year follow up. And I would like to show the endocrine and the exocrine insufficiency development. So in the first year, 227 patients, and in the second year, control 114 patients attended um, when we made the download of the data. Um, based on the etiology, mostly we had patients with biliary pancreatitis. In the second place, we had the alcoholic pancreatitis. 5% uh, had severe, 31 moderate, and 54% uh, mild pancreatitis based on the Atlanta classification. The data analysis will be showed in uh, these groups. So we made a group for patients who had already chronic pancreatitis when we started the follow-up. In the other group, we had patients who had already diabetes, who had both of the disease and who had none of this disease at the start of the follow-up. Um, now I would like to show you the endocrine insufficiency in the first year. Um, with red, you can see the newly diagnosed diabetes, which was 25% in the precipi group and 16% um, in the non group. Um, with orange, you can see the PrEP diabetes, so the impact glucose tolerance for the interfasting glucose um, these patients. Um, in the second year, with yellow, we can see that patients who had uh, the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus in the first year, and uh, newly we diagnosed eight person uh, in the non group and uh, in 45% in the PrEP group uh, diabetes. Um, we wanted to show that um, um, how the recurrent attack uh, influences uh, this um, endocrine um, insufficiency development. So the non-group was divided into three subgroups. The patients who had only one attack, who had one recurrent attack, or who had two or more uh, recurrent attacks. And uh, because of the low number of the patients, we didn't perform the statistical analysis, but uh, it seems that the recurrent attack um, did not influence the um, development of uh, endocrine insufficiency. Um, then uh, we wanted to see that how the severity of the pancreatitis influences the um, endocrine insufficiency. So the patients were divided into mild, moderate, and severe group. And uh, it seems that um, relatively more patients developed uh, diabetes in the severe group. Um, now I would like to show you the data of the exocrine insufficiency. Uh, we think we can see the <clears throat> severe and with uh, yellow, the mild uh, endocrine insufficiency. Uh, severe insufficiency was 44% uh, in the precipi and only 6% um, in the non group. Um, in the second year, in the precipi group, uh, altogether the severe um, um, insuff insufficiency was 45%. By the mild insufficiency was uh, 18%. And uh, in the non group, severe insufficiency was uh, below 10% of the patients by the mild was 6.6%. Um, we made here also subgroup analysis based on the recurrent acute pancreatitis attacks. And uh, here we can see that it seems as. Um, um, in patients who had more uh, recurrent attacks, so they are more likely to develop severe or uh, mild uh, exocrine insufficiency. Um, then we made this uh, analysis also based on the severity. And uh, here we can see that uh, in the second year, 
um, in patients who had moderate or severe pancreatitis or um, endocrine insufficiency of sleep. So as a summary and conclusions, you can say that uh, we asked this is a six-year follow-up study of uh, with pancreatitis patients. Again, is we find the biomarkers of the early chronic pancreatitis. The newly diagnosed diabetes was 25% uh, in the preceptive group and 16% in the non-group in the first year. And uh, diabetes was 63% in the preceptive and 24% in the non -group in the second year. Um, diabetes seems to develop in a moderate and severe pancreatitis and it's not related to recurrent with pancreatitis. Um, severe endocrine insufficiency was 44% in the preceptive group and six in the non-group in the first year. And it seems that the number of recurrent with pancreatitis increases the endocrine insufficiency and in the second year, more exocrine insufficiency was seen in the moderate and the severe group. I would like to thank for uh, all of the colleagues in the uh, region, Tikoshvagyarvan, who helped us to act on this uh, study. Thank you for your attention. You are excellent, Dr. Thank I was just wondering if, whether you can discriminate between type um, 3C diabetes and type 2 diabetes in the patient who, with an increase in the first year after the attack. And thank you for your question. Uh, yes, so in patients who had uh, already chronic pancreatitis, uh, we can see lower C peptide level. And um, I can say that so in the first two years, Altogether, we had um, 97 patients who had uh, diabetes, and uh, in 12.5 percent of these patients, we had the type 3 uh, diabetes, type 3 C. Hey, congratulations for the great study. And uh, maybe I missed something, but did you look into the etiology? I asked if, because we were looking into this as well, and there is much higher number of exocrine and endocrine um, uh, changes in patients after alcoholic pancreatitis uh, as regards to other etiology. Uh, thank you for your question. Now in this uh, analysis, we um, didn't um, um, so the data based on the etiology, what I showed in the beginning, it was uh, from the literature, but um, thank you for your comment. I think that in the future, when we will have a um, higher number of uh, patients, then we will make the analysis also based on that. Do you have any data about, well, let's say, the, the severity of diabetes? I mean, the diabetes could be controlled by oral antidiabetic or insulin was required at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for your question. Yes, I have uh, data, but uh, they were not analyzed yet. So in the future, I, I can show you. There is no question. Thank you, Alexandra.